folks, welcome back to the Needy Homesteader. My name's Paul, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm from Paul's Rule of Thumb. I have been friends with Heather for a very long time, um, and I followed her channel for a very long time before that. Um, so I'm coming to you as part of the Inspired by Needy uh, project, uh, where content creators throughout YouTube that have been selected by Heather are helping to create content to keep her channel moving forward while she's healing. Um, and the idea is to do things that were inspired by Needy. Well, my whole YouTube channel is inspired by Needy. Um, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel if it wasn't for her. She really is the person that spent time encouraging me to um, you know, stretch my, my boundaries and, and go for it and give it a shot. And here I am a few years later, um, and, you know, I have an amazing YouTube channel with amazing subscribers, um, and many of you, if not all of you, subscribe to both of us. Um, so this was just a great opportunity for me to you know, come to the aid of my, one of my very best friends, um, and create some content that hopefully you will enjoy, and if you do, my channel will be linked below, um, so you can go check out the things on my channel, and, um, I hope you enjoy these videos going forward. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, Cookbook Corners, um, that's what I've chose to do as my videos, so I will bring you along and I hope you folks enjoy the videos that come forward. Okay folks welcome back so today we're gonna talk about this. So this is Milk Street and it is a magazine but it is much much more than that. So Milk Street was started by Christopher Kimball who many of you may remember from America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Country. Um, so he started this company called Milk Street and they produce a magazine, they produce many, many cookbooks. I want to say that there is at least five right now that I can think of. Um, they have a website, they do cooking classes, um, they do unique ingredients they sell. They have a shop where they sell amazing ingredients that you can get from around the world. Um, very cool things. But, so I subscribe to the website and to the magazine. Um, so I get the magazine when they come out. Um, so this was May, June of 2021. Um, but what they do is every year, at the end of the year, they produce these. Okay, so you can see I have 2018, 2019, and 2020. And what this is, is this book it's a hardbound book, you know, really beautifully done, very simple, very tasteful, okay? They take every episode, episode? This is where I am today. Every issue of the magazine, and they hardbound the entire year together. So these are all of the issues from 2020 hardbound into a book. Now... You would think, okay, well, I already have the magazines, because you've been getting them for the whole year, right? So, the first, when they, they first did this, the first time they sent one to me, or, you know, sent me the notice that I could get one, I thought, well, why would I want that? I have the magazines, you know? It doesn't make sense. But, then I thought about the fact that, you know, magazines are hard to keep and reference and you know they're a little bit more work um quite frankly and they require you know more effort to store and maintain and all those types of things and then i thought what a great opportunity for me also then to share with somebody else so what i do is at the end of the year when i get the annual cookbook which is you know the whole year then I take that opportunity to share the magazines with other people. Um, so sometimes I'll give somebody a whole year. Sometimes I've given people a couple issues. 
Um, so it's a great opportunity to then share and pay it forward. And you can do it throughout the year knowing that you're going to get the annual at the end of the year. So after you've gotten yours, like I just got this one, once you go through it and you've you know decided what you like or what you don't like or what you might want to make or what you don't want to make, if you want to pass it on right away, you can because you know you're going to get these recipes down the line. If you want to wait until you actually have them in hard form, you can do that too. So let's talk a little bit about what Milk Street is about. Um, I'm going to tell you right up front, these aren't always easy recipes. This isn't, um, this isn't necessarily quick go-to, 30-minute meals, that type of thing. Some of these are a little bit out there. Um, there's a lot of global flavors, there's recipes where you have to really search for ingredients. I mean, these aren't, I'm not going to tell you this is easy cooking. This is inspirational cooking. That's the way I look at this. But there are some features of the magazine itself that I really appreciate that are even outside of recipes. So let me just show you. It's a really odd size, too, I'm going to tell you. It's not an 8.5 by 11. It's a strangely sized magazine. Um, I don't know why. So, alright, so it starts out, there's always an editor's note in the beginning, and then this is one of the sections that I really appreciate. So this is the very first section of the magazine. And it looks like this, it's always two pages. Um, and it's called Meze, Small Bites from Milk Street. And what this is, is this highlights products. So, whether it be a cooking utensil or a cooking uh, device or, you know, it could be food, it could be a spice. Um, so, let me just go through, like, this This is the most recent issue. So, one of the first thing they have is kelp, pickles from the sea. So, these are dill pickle kelp, okay? Now... This is not something I would ever search out. You know, like, I, I never in a million years would even thought of pickled kelp. But here it is in front of you. And, you know, they tell you about it and where to source it and all that, you know, and even some suggestions on how to use it. So, like, um, we like them in tartar sauce and egg salad or minced into a brown butter herb sauce for fish or pork. They also make a great addition to cheese plates or are delicious on burgers, fish sandwiches, or in a dirty martini. Um, and then it tells you, available from barnaclefoods.com for $8 for a 10-ounce jar. So it gives you where you can get it, gives you the price. So like for me, would I pay 8 bucks for a 10-ounce jar of something that I may or may not use? Probably not. But now I know, right up front. I didn't even have to do the research. Um, the next thing is umami in a bottle. So this is liquid shio koji, which is... Uh, it's a traditional Japanese condiment made from fermented malted rice. Um, so it's like a stronger miso paste, basically. But it's in liquid form. Then they have a uh, knife that is... It's the Hinlac, H-I-N-N-L-A-C, Stock Chop Cauliflower Prep Tool. And it is a tool specifically designed to help you get the core out of cauliflower and keep the florets whole. That might be something I would think about. It's available on Amazon for $7, it says. Um, a coffee press that keeps grounds at bay. So it is a French press that once you brew it or separate the grounds from the coffee, it keeps the grounds separate from the coffee so that your coffee doesn't continue to brew and get too strong. I thought that was a pretty cool cool advice. Um, then they have baking sheets from Holy Sheet, um, which uh, apparently is completely non-stick, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then the last section is In Your Hands, that's this section here. And so this talks about one thing or ingredient. In this case, they're talking about tahini. And it gives three different examples from Milk Street patrons, like me, 
of how to use tahini in different ways. So this section, this first section is something I really, really love. Um, I feel like I'm shiny. Then it goes into Tuesday nights. Um, so this is a recipe section. Okay. And one of their cookbooks is Tuesday nights. Um, and this is dinner, fast, bold, and casual. So these are supposed to be the easier of the recipes. Um, and like I said, these are not, you know, your average recipe. So they have a Tunisian style frittata with potato and chicken, Chilean beef, tomato, and corn saute, Indonesian style fried noodles, uh, Oaxican Oxic style white bean stew, Pork chops with roasted pepper mojo and salmon and curry coconut sauce. So, if you're feeling like stretching your culinary muscle. Then it goes through and there's different sections in here with different recipes. Uh, Indian carrot stir fry, chickpea and tomato curry, coriander cumin beef stew, cauliflower chickpea salad with dill lemon dressing. Okay, this, you can see the picture here. I mean, it looks delicious, like, so good. And, like, that would be a great, like, meatless Monday option, like, you know, to do a vegetarian meal. Afghanistan's Better Burger. Um, and they're just beautiful articles, like, you know, you can see, like, there's, there's really beautiful, well-written articles in here. A um, couple different curries. Venetian rice and peas, uh, Risi Abisi. So this is made with like a green pea. But just look at the beautiful picture. Um, polenta with shrimp and tomatoes, lemongrass chicken, Vietnamese braised lemongrass chicken. Portuguese wine braised potatoes with garlic and chilies. Everything about that screams my name. Um, shrimp orzo and zucchini with ouzo and mint. Almond coconut cake with cherries and pistachios. Uh, yes, please. Then here's something on this issue that has been super popular. In fact, I believe Heather has made this on her channel, Japanese milk bread. I think. I think she has a video on that. If not, she probably will sometime in the future. Um, but this is hugely popular on the internet right now. Everybody's talking about Japanese milk bread. Um, so it goes through that whole process. Spicy fennel and tomato couscous. Um, and then there's a section that's called Off the Air. And this is like answering... Uh, you know, subscriber questions, editor's answers to Milk Street radio questions. Um, let's see. Oh, and then this is another section that I really like. This is book reviews. Okay. Obviously, we're here on Cookbook Corner right now talking about cookbooks. Everybody that knows me knows I am... Hugely, hugely passionate about cookbooks. So this section is really cool because it talks about new cookbooks and it gives you a review of them and kind of what to expect. So these are, um, the three that they did this time are the Arabesque Table, uh, Gian Famous Foods, which I've actually looked at that cookbook and it's really cool. I went to Barnes & Noble and looked at it, and My Korea. Um, so it's a great place to look at cookbooks that will probably be new and different to most people. Um, and then that is pretty much brings us to the end. So that's kind of what an issue of this is like. Um, it is 32 pages in this issue. Um, so I will put a link below to like the Milk Street website so that you can go on you can explore you can look at different options there's no affiliation for me i don't get anything from this i'm not a you know i'm not a a a link for milk street this is just something that i love 
that's why I will just put the basic link on there um, so you can go, you can check it out for yourself and decide if you like it, you can try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to. You can just look at the website and get stuff from the website. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you. I thought it was something fun, different, interesting, unique, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please like, share, subscribe, continue to watch all the Inspired by Needy videos. Um, there is some amazing content being put out there. Um, I've seen, I think, the first four videos now? Three videos? Four videos? I think four videos now. Um, and there's already been some amazing things on here. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, come back and see us soon. And as always, I hope you had a great day.